Well, hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a homemade wood stain uh, out of vinegar and steel wool. So join with me and let's get started. Okay, you've probably seen this uh, homemade stain uh, recipe before. A lot of uh, uh, pins out there, videos uh, going around how to make this stuff, so it's pretty easy to make. Uh, recently, I made a beer tote out of uh, poplar wood and I decided to stain the poplar wood since the poplar wood, you know, itself is, is pretty plain. So I basically made up my own stain and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Okay, basically you're going to need four things to make this stain. Uh, I prefer to use a mason jar, uh, just a good uh, glass container to put this in. You're going to need uh, a medium to small container of uh, white vinegar. You're also going to need um, one steel wool pad, uh, and this is called four aux. So if you look for something that's real fine steel wool, it has four uh, zeros. That's the four aux steel wool. And you want to get these, prefer preferably don't get any that have soap in it. So look for the ones without the soap. And then a bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, to start out, what I like to do is just tear this steel wool to shreds and then just stuff it down into the jar. This might take a minute or two. Okay, once you got the steel wool ready, just go ahead and pour in about a cup or more of the vinegar. And then you're going to come in and add I don't know, about two to three tablespoons of the hydrogen peroxide. And I don't know if you can see that, but it does actually start to uh, chemically react, and especially after you put the hydrogen peroxide in there. Okay, I would suggest storing this uh, in your garage or porch. Uh, somewhere outside, not inside the house, uh, and I would leave the, leave the lid off. Uh, it does put off a slight gas, not very much, and a slight odor. Uh, you could cover it with paper towel, you know, put a rubber band around it, but I wouldn't, you know, put the, the lid back on to seal it. I use my stain after 24 hours, however, it will take two or three days to totally dissolve the uh, steel wool. Here's a batch that I made about four days ago, and I don't know if you can see it, but the it's gotten a lot darker, and the steel wool has uh, totally dissolved. Okay, once you've got your, your stain to the point where you, you like the color and the steel wool is pretty much all dissolved, then you can also you filter this. So you can use a coffee filter. It might take a little bit longer. I just use a paper towel put over the top of the mason jar and we'll pour a little bit in at a time. And this is just gonna filter out all those pieces of metal that are floating around in there. Okay, here's the uh, stain after I've uh, filtered it. Like I said, I filtered it through a paper towel. Took probably three to five minutes to do that because the uh, paper towel will kind of clog up and you have to kind of rub it a little bit to make sure this is flowing. There's not as much in here. I know this is probably not a full batch because I have uh, use some of this already on a couple of projects. Okay, when you apply the stain to the wood, I think taking a uh, fine uh, uh, fine brush or a foam brush works well. You can also use a paper towel, but I think it's important to try to get, get, get it coated uh, evenly. So what I'm going to do is test it out on this piece of red oak. Just put a little bit on there. Nice even strokes. Notice that I'm also using the nitrile gloves. Uh, although this stuff will not hurt you or, or burn you, it just gets on your fingers and smells a little bit. Um, but just do some nice even strokes. And uh, you can see that right away with this oak, the uh, stain is reacting with the tannins in the red oak fairly fast. Um, you need to do this also in a well ventilated area and just keep in mind, the react, let it react to the wood. 
Uh, I usually give it about an hour or so to react with the wood and also to completely dry. Um, poplar and the red oak, I noticed, reacted very uh, quickly with this. So, But it, it, it responds differently with the different types of woods. So you just have to experiment with it. Okay, here are some samples of wood after uh, I apply the stain and uh, you know let it dry, let it work uh, and react with the wood. So over here, uh, this board is red oak, and you notice it reacted. It reacts pretty quickly, and it, and it gets pretty dark. Uh, this is uh, in the board of the middle is poplar, and notice this section here was the first coat that I applied. And then, you know, I applied a second coat. You can tell when you apply a second coat, it gets a little bit darker. The poplar wood reacted very quickly as well. You could start seeing the reaction pretty quick. And then the last board over here is southern pine. And it, it reacted a little bit slower than the poplar, but you can see that the coloration on these particular boards uh, are about the same. Again, I would recommend experimenting with this because it will react differently to different species of wood and it will probably react differently uh, to you know different boards of the, even the same species so you just want to experiment on scraps of wood that you're going to be using in your actual project if the wood stain is a little bit too dark you think you can also add white vinegar to thin it up and, and make it a little bit lighter that's another thing i learned Again, you got to just take time to experiment. Um, if you want, you can come back over these stains with a urethane finish or an acrylic finish or some type of finish that you want to use to kind of seal it a little bit better. Um, you know, for outdoor projects, maybe a spar urethane would be appropriate. Uh, maybe an indoor project, you could use an acrylic or I've heard that some people also like to use a wax finish to seal over the top of this. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please give it a like and uh, please subscribe. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.